I am a Vim fanboy. I think that that's fairly well established. I like Vim. I make videos about Vim. I talk about how good Vim is. I make fun of everybody who uses Emacs. You name it. I'm a Vim fanboy. But for being a Vim fanboy, I do spend an atrociously amount of, long amount of time not using Vim. I have used Kate for several months over the course of the last year where I was actually trying to get away from Vim for various reasons. I've used many other, like I've used VS Code for a little while. I've used several different text editors over the years, and some of them even are more powerful than what you'd consider a text editor. But I have used many of them over the course of the years, and I've never actually spent much time in Genie until Drew, my podcast co-host, decided that he was going to get me onto Genie because his config of Genie is really awesome. And I saw it and I was like, you know, that looks cool. So I'm going to have to try it. So for the last little bit, I have been spending a lot of time in Genie. And I have some thoughts. What I thought I'd do today is talk about five reasons why I think Genie is one of the best text editors you can use, and then a couple reasons where it kind of really falls short for me. So let's go ahead and jump in. The first one, actually, let's go ahead and just first take a look at my Genie. This is my Genie, and this is not what it looks like out of the box. And that takes care of the first point on my list. It is very, very customizable. You can move menus around and stuff like that. You can add the file tree browser along the side. You can theme it, which I'll talk more about later. And you can do just a ton of stuff to make the UI look the way that you want it to look. Now, is it as customizable as, say, QOM Notes or Kate? No, definitely not. Uh, those are KDE applications, and nothing beats a KDE application when it comes to customization. But I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. I think that this level of customization makes it easier to customize without f drowning yourself in features and tweaks and stuff like that, which is something that definitely happens when you're using a KDE application like Kate. So... The first one on the list is customizability in terms of the UI. It is very, very good, and I love it. So that's number one. The second one on the list is that this has a lot of plugins, and it allows you to truly customize your experience right down to the bit. And I really do think that plugins are something that if you're going to have a text editor, you really need because you don't want to shove everything into the text editor right from default because not everyone needs every feature. By having some of the extraneous features in, in a plugin system, you can just let people pick and choose what they actually need. And Genie has done this very well. And going along with that, they've done it well enough where they haven't given you enough plugins that is overwhelming. There are maybe 50 plugins here in total. That's really all there is. There's not hundreds of them. You're not going to lose yourself in plugins, which is nice. Now, I will say some of the one of the downsides is if you really truly want customizability and a lot of plugins, this is probably not going to be for you. But I don't think that for most people that's going to become a thing. For me, just having this small amount of plugins, you can just kind of Add the ones you want and leave the rest of them alone. You don't have to go swimming for one that you need. The third one on the list is that it does a lot of things that are necessary very, very well. So things like the tree browser. Now, again, this is not default. That comes in a plugin. But once you've added it, it works astonishingly well. Another thing that works really, really well and for me is a personal absolute must-have are the tabs. Oh, here along the top, you can see that I have tabs. And it just does a really good job of having tabs here that you can use without having them take up an enormous amount of space. And it also does a good job of catering to tab hoarders, shall we say. So if I were to close this and then open it back up again, it would actually remember the tabs that I have open, which is nice. It doesn't always do it. There's a bug recently where sometimes I'll open up and all my tags are gone, which pisses me off. But for the most part, and that's very, very recent. I don't know what's actually going on there. Uh, but for the most part, when you close it, the tabs come back, which is nice. So it does a good job of, of catering to people who have the same tabs open for long periods of time, uh, which is, uh, you know, the definition of my soul, apparently. So there you go. Another thing that with a plugin it does really well is the markdown preview. So 
this right here is a Markdown preview. And again, it's done by plugin. But if you write a lot of stuff in Markdown, which all of my stuff is done in Markdown between this and all of my work and stuff, and having a previewer that you can have attached onto it is very, very nice. Now, the next one on the list is kind of subjective, and that's because I have some really bad experiences with Vim and large documents. And when I mean large documents, I mean 100,000 words. If you put those into Vim and you have any plugins, Vim is going to be slow. It's just absolutely the case, at least for me. Every time I open up a really long document that has a ton of words in, in, in it, it just does not work well. It's very, very sluggish to open. Sometimes it's sluggish to go between lines using Vim motions. So Vim is not great when it comes to large documents. And that leads me to this point. Genie has been fantastic. Now, I don't have a 100,000 word document here to show you guys. Most of that stuff's for work. But... When I open up a document that's that large, it just opens up and it easily scrolls. I can, you know, I can scroll to the top and the bottom really easily. Now, like I said, this one here is not nearly as big. Like, this is just a couple thousand words. But the point is, is that large documents work really, really well in Genie and that's great for me. It, it has been a revelation to be able to use a text editor that does large documents really, really well. So there you go. That's the next one. The last one on the list, it is very easy to use. If you are someone who is coming from them or you've spent a lot of time configuring them or you've spent a lot of time configuring Kate or VS Code or something like that, you probably know that sometimes text editors, you can kind of get into the weeds in terms of customization and tweaking it and making it look the way that you want it to, to look and stuff like that. And that stuff can all kind of distract you from actually doing your work, right? Like, I was never very productive in Kate because I was always tweaking or finding a different plugin or something along those lines, and it just wasn't conducive to actually working. Now, Genie, while it does have customization, you know, features, and you can theme it and stuff like that, once you get it set up, you're probably not going to be messing around with it that much, right? Because it doesn't have so many features that you get distracted by cool, shiny things like I do sometimes in other text editors. So once I have this set up, I've just left it this way. And it's awesome. Like, I, don't, I have no interest in changing this whatsoever. Now, I do still change the theme, which I am happy to say it is actually easy to change themes. Now, you can create your own. There's a actually a theme store that you can get. Not called a store, but like a theme repository that you can get. So you can have a whole bunch of themes or you can create your own. Uh, this one here was created for me by Drew, and it's just basically setting the colors and then putting them where they need to go. That's basically all there is to it. And so if you if you need to create your own color scheme, you can do so very, very easily, and that's nice. So if you do want to customize it and get into the, that weeds a little bit, you can. But again, it's not as necessary as it is with some other text editors where it does really feel like you... Like, people cultivate their NeoVim and Vim configs, right? With a whole bunch of plugins and plugin managers and all this stuff. And it's all part of a thing. But that distracts away from actually getting stuff done. Genie, while it has some customization stuff, does not distract from working, which I find really good. So the last one, I'm actually going to show you guys the note I made for this video, and that's going to go into the things that I find the reason why Genie is not the best. The first one, as you see here, it does not have Vim mode built in, which is fine. I'm actually okay with that, uh, because the Vim mode, such as it is in plugin form, is just subpar. It does not work very well. Now, it does Vim motions fairly okay. You know, you can use GG to go to the top, capital G to go to the bottom, you can use HJKL to move around, you can do YY and DD and all the stuff you'd, that you'd do in Vim. That stuff works fairly okay, but it has one glaring issue, and it and the, the issue is that it, it takes the default copy behavior from Vim, meaning that if you delete something, it adds it to the, to the clipboard buffer. And that annoys me. <laughs> that really annoys me. Because at least in Vim, you can change that. As far as I'm aware, you can't change it in the Genie plugin. So if I were to... I don't have it enabled right now. But if I were to say, just delete this word theme. And now it's just... It, it should just delete it, right? It shouldn't add it to the copy buffer. But if you have the Vim plugin enabled, it does. And that was just a deal breaker for me. I, I can't stand that functionality. Now, again, that's inherited from Vim. So I understand why they did it, but 
still that was annoying af if, if you will that's just was not it was a deal breaker i couldn't use it so i've gone away from using the vim plugin completely uh, and i just use mouse and keyboard to to navigate which makes me feel like a caveman but there you go all right so the the, the next one is probably the biggest deal breaker for me and that's that the Markdown plugin is subpar. Yes, you can get the Markdown preview like I showed you earlier. So if I go here, you guys can see the Markdown preview. It does fine. I like that quite a lot. But it doesn't do things like automatic listing. So if I do a list item here, here like so, and then I go down to the next level, it doesn't give me another asterisk. It just, I have to do that manually. Now, Genie does have automatic open and close parentheses so if I do that it will do that that's cool and it will do it with quotation marks to, as well so that's nice like I showed you there it doesn't do things for listing very well and it doesn't do things really well for headlines it reminds you a lot of a terminal and then it doesn't do customizable font sizes for headlines now there's no reason why they can't do that but they don't it's all just one font size. Now you can change the font size, so it, but it changes the font size for everything, not just the headlines, right? So it, it very much acts like a terminal in that regard. And while it, I've come to live with it, I don't care for it all that much because I would very much prefer to, ha if I'm going to use a Markdown editor, for it to have good Markdown support. And unfortunately, Genie does not. Now, like I said, I've lived with it, but again, I I'm just not as happy with it as I possibly could be. So those are the two reasons why it's absolutely not the best. I have some good ones here why it is the best. But let me end the video in the traditional Matt wishy-washy fashion and say the best text editor is the one that helps you get your shit done. That is the best text editor that you can use. As of right now, for me, Genie is really good at helping me get stuff done. Ma mainly, mainly because it's super, super fast. Like, I can open up a Word document that has 50,000 words in it. It just opens. I can scroll through that thing really, really fast. I don't have to worry about any sluggishness, which I always do when I'm using Neo my NeoVim config. Now, people are always going to get into my my comments and say, well, NeoVim's not actually fast, slow. For me, it's absolutely guaranteed it's going to be a plugin of some kind. I've never managed to isolate what that plugin is that's causing it to go slow, although I'm pretty sure it's the Markdown plugin, which is kind of something that I need when I basically live in Markdown. So there you go. So I, I do have a tendency to gravitate now towards Genie because it is super fast. So that's probably the number one reasons why I would say it's the best one for me right now. But it's not going to be that way for everyone. And there was one glaring omission to this entire video. I didn't talk about coding whatsoever. And there's a reason for that. And a big reason. I'm not a developer. So I couldn't judge this thing based on actually doing any coding in it. I've done no coding in it whatsoever. None. And I don't know that they plan to. Like the other day when I did that stream, when I was doing the coding on Qtile, I used Vim. So <laughs> now that's just probably because of habit, but still I had a tendency to lean towards Vim when I actually wanted to do actual code work. I don't know how well Genie would handle it. I'm assuming that it would handle it just fine because it's meant to do so, but I haven't tested that yet. So there's that one glaring omission. So that's the end of this video. If you have any thoughts on Genie or any other text editor, you can leave those in the comment section below. I'd love to hear from you. You can hold your comments though on the whole uh, NeoVim being slow. I understand that that's just a me problem and it's not natively slow. I'm just having a plugin issue that I've never fixed. So there you go. You can hold those comments. But other than that, would love to hear from you. You can follow me on Mastodon or Odyssey. Those links will be in the video description. You can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash the Linuxcast. Thanks to everybody who does support me on Patreon and YouTube. You guys are all absolutely amazing. Without you, the channel just would not be anywhere near where it is right now. So thank you so very, very much for your support. I truly do appreciate it. You guys are awesome. You keep me going. So thank you so very much for your support. Again, just you guys are awesome. If you would also like to support me, you, again, Patreon and Ko-fi and YouTube, those links will be in the video description. You can also head on over to the store, which is available at shop.thelinuscast.org. There you'll find all sorts of awesome merchandise where you can buy something, get something, and then also support the channel all at the same time. 
and I'd be very appreciative if you did that, or and I'm very appreciative for those of you who have, who have done that. So thank you so very much for that. Thanks everybody for watching. I'll see you next time.